Hi, it's a lipstick gal. Thank you so much for watching today. I wanted to do the eyeshadow palette tag. Uh, this is something that Samantha March and Allie Glines decided to do together. And, and I know it's kind of been going around on different social media. Um, and it's been a while and I, I just haven't gotten around to doing it. So let's get into it. Thank you for watching and thank you for being subscribed. All right, so the first question is, what's your newest palette? And this is the last palette that I bought before everything went into lockdown. This is the Born This Way, the Natural Nudes from Too Faced. I really like this palette a lot. I do think that the metallic or this foiled formula here in these two lighter shades is not the easiest to work with, but I feel like once you get from this end down, the rest of the metallics or the foiled shades are pretty good. But those first two, they're not my favorite, but I love the mattes in here and I love the color story. I feel like it's just a really beautiful, easy to use palette. So the next question is, which is the palette you've had the longest? And this is one that is very near and dear to my heart and I love it so much. I don't use it anymore. It's Balm Jovi from the Balm. This is their Rockstar palette and face palette. I, I like that it had um, 12 eyeshadows, a highlight. This is their Mary Luminizer. And I think this is their Down Boy blush. I forget which one it is, but they did have a blush. And they did also have this little uh, magnetized segment down here where they had cream products. I think they were lipsticks. They smell terrible, haven't been in it. But I remember reaching for this a lot. The reason I love this palette is I remember watching an Emily Noel review of this palette. And it's the first time ever that somebody that I watched on YouTube inspired me to buy a palette. And I have not been able to get rid of this palette. And I think it's for sentimental reasons because I remember watching Emily Noel's video and her really liking this palette. And I was like, I want that too. So this is my oldest one. My most expensive palette is this one. This is the Viseart Grande Pro Volume 3. This is one that I would never have purchased on my own. It's $175. That's a lot. I got this with my Beautylish Lucky Bag. I got the extra large and this came in there. I'll tell you, it is a beautiful palette. I knew that Viseart palettes were really nice. I had two of the 12 pen palettes. Those are $80 and those are kind of like expensive for me. But this one, I've used it more than I thought I would. I haven't been wearing a lot of makeup. Uh, I would say the second quarter of this year, like so from April through June, we're in early July now. I'm starting to do a little bit more eye makeup, but I love this and I really want to start using some of these really kind of more pastel-y shades and do like a one color eye look with the pastel shades. I've done it a couple of times and they're really, really pretty, but this is the one that I never would have bought, but I'm glad I have, but it's not most affordable palette is this little beauty, the little $3 e.l.f. palette. This is the bite size eyeshadow palettes, and this is the rose water one. So I wanted to pick up more of these. I probably would get like the, is there one, like a cream one, like a cream and sugar? I don't know. There's one that was like kind of neutrally nudes, and I thought the green one looked really good too, but I never got around to it. And... I always feel like I have too many eyeshadows already and that I didn't really need more, but I really wanted to try these and I feel like they're excellent for $3 and I hate it being like, it's excellent for, I don't want it to be qualified. It is a really good palette, but I feel like what really makes it outstanding is that you get four shades that are cohesive and that the product itself is really good. So this is my least expensive. So my everyday palette, the one that I pull for when I want to actually do a really easy, fast look, this is one you can't even get anymore. It's this. This is the Kristen Leanne and Urban Decay Daydream palette. And it's five mattes. And this shade here is the perfect, just a little bit, but not too much in the crease for me. If I want a little bit more, I'll put some of this in. If I really want a beautiful kind of full look. I'll throw in some of the dark stuff. I'll use some of this peachy shade and the white for the inner corner and right above the arch of the brow. I don't normally, I normally really sit in these two soft brown shades and sometimes a little bit of this, but I have used this a lot. And 
I don't talk about it here because you can't go and get it anymore, but they are the perfect shades for my skin tone and I love the matte formula. I feel like this is a really beautiful, and it's the one that I reach for if I'm going for a really fast, quick, easy look. All mattes and really soft neutrals. So if we're talking colorful palettes, I would say my most colorful, you've already seen, is this guy here from Viseart. Uh, the Grande Pro 3, but this is another one that I love and I use more than the Grande Pro 3. And it is a lot, it's got a lot of color in there. Uh, you've got some burgundies, uh, some red tones, some warm oranges, some cooler tones, blues and purples, a couple of glitter shades, um, some more yellowy tones. It really does run the gamut, kind of like you could do a whole rainbow look with this. I think it's beautiful. Now, I don't always spend a lot of time like using these really darker shades here, but I love this palette so much. I also love that it has a Super Shock shade right here. It doesn't feel the same as when it first launched. Was it August or September last year? But I really do like it and it's really quite colorful. So smallest palette, I didn't know if this would count. <laughs> this is Smashbox Full Exposure. And look at that, it's so itty bitty. You have one matte and one metallic. Um, this is, it has the shades S3 and M3. I don't know. I kind of don't really, this was like a gift with purchase and they always give minis. So I don't know that this really counts. If we're talking about one that I purchased that is really small, other than the one from e.l.f. would be this. This is a smoke balm from the balm. It has three shades, but I use this so frequently. You have one matte and you have two metallic shades and it's really beautiful. It even has a mirror on it, and I would think that this is, you know, it's just enough to so I can see my eyes in the palette, and I can very easily do this. The other thing that I love, since it's called the Smoke Balm, it has, it looks like a, um, a striking area if you were to, if, like it'd be a pack of matches. I think it's super cute, super, super cute, but this is, you know, the smallest three shadows in a palette. Maybe not be the smallest size-wise, but it definitely has the least number of eyeshadows. Biggest palette, and I was like instantly, the Jaclyn Hill palette. This is the one that has 32 shades. I don't have another palette that has 32 shades in it. I haven't reached for this in more than a year, maybe like a year and a half. Um, but another one that is like big as size-wise, and it's very oh, frustrating, and it lives in a drawer because it's just gargantuan, is this one. <laughs> This is the Kat Von D Metal Matte Palette. I haven't used it in a long time. I think it's been more than a year since I pulled it out, but it has a whole row of mattes and a whole row of her metallic shades. I don't know whether it's the controversy that makes me not want to reach for this or just the, the size, size that it's like, it's massive, it's huge. I feel like I could beat somebody with it. <laughs> but that's biggest like size wise. Best memory for a palette was hard because I wanted to, I instantly thought of the Balm Jovi palette from the Balm that was my oldest palette, but then there are a couple of others. And here's the thing, my best memories come down to things that I remember having a lot of joy purchasing and a lot of joy using. One of them, I had to dig this out of my declutter stash, was this. This is the Too Faced Nikki Tutorials, The Power of Makeup. I remember when Nikki announced that she was doing a collaboration, I was head over heels. So you have a bronzer, you have a highlight, you have two blushes, and then nine shadows. Now the formulation didn't really work for me. I feel like the, the eyeshadow shades are pretty, they're basic, they're nice, but I think more than anything, I was so excited that somebody that I really admired on YouTube was coming out with a collaboration and with a really big brand at the time. You know, Too Faced was just hitting out of the ballpark with all of their chocolate bar palettes. It's been many years since this came out, but I really do have good memories associated with that. Another one that I had really good memories associated with is another collab. And it's the Urban Decay Gwen Stefani palette. I still have this and I still use it. The other one is in my declutter pile. But this one I really like because it has a lot of really beautiful, soft, nude shades in here. And then if you need something a little bit more, you can. Um, it really speaks to my heart for kind of a pretty soft eye, but the formula is still good. I still use a lot of the shades in here. These first two shades here are the ones I use the most. And I do use these two shades here, but I don't, I don't do a lot with 
size three. But I still use this and I think it's a great palette and there's a lot of great memories and I love it so much. If we're talking about something that is worth the hype, if you have not purchased anything from Sydney Grace, I can't say enough good about them. Now they are an indie brand, so they don't get the same hype that a Natasha Denona or a Pat McGrath or some of the other bigger, more prestigious brands are, but Sydney Grace has amazing, amazing quality. And this is definitely worth it. Out of all the palettes that I have, this is one that I reach for so frequently. I love every single shade in here. Like this one is very loved. There's like a nice dip in this and I've only had this since February, um, maybe late January, early February, but it's new for 2020 and I love this so much. Definitely worth the hype. Now, ones that are not worth the hype, I couldn't decide, I couldn't decide. So I remember the one that I was really excited to get and I'd seen a lot of people talking about on YouTube and then when I got it and I tried it, it was like, uh, it's kind of like the sad trombone. <laughs> this was the first one that came to mind when I saw that, not worth the hype, definitely this. It's on sale now, don't buy it on sale, it's not worth it. I liked the idea of having pressed glitters in here. Now the pressed glitters in this formula are terrible. The ColourPop pressed glitters are much better. The Tati Beauty pressed glitters actually do a lot better. These are Fallout City in a matter of like half an hour. And I felt like the rest of the shades, once you took out the pressed glitters, they were just okay. I feel like Too Faced doesn't always have consistency. They have consistency issues. And I felt like the mattes and the metallics in here were just okay. And I think that this was the, ugh. Now another one, and it could be because it's the price point that was definitely not worth the hype for me, but I, I have it and I do like it. It's a Pat McGrath palette. This is the Mothership 2. It's the one with the green shade. Now these more special formula shades are really beautiful. They're really gorgeous. They're so pretty, but I'll tell you, I don't reach for this palette. And it could be because I feel like since I paid so much for it, I need to save it for a special occasion. You shouldn't. If you paid a lot of money for it, you should use it every day to get your money's worth. But I also do have a lot of problems with these uh, special shades here, these uh, four at the end. They are a little flaky and I do get some sparkle fallout and I don't really care for that. But I feel like the rest of the formula in here, like the mattes and just the regular metallics are really pretty. These really special ones are gorgeous, but I feel like it's for an eye look that's gonna be on for a short while and not an all day eye look. And maybe I haven't figured out how to do it. If you're better with makeup than I am, you probably can get it to work, but I still struggle with this palette. And so it doesn't really make me want to reach for it. And knowing that I spent $125 on it, ugh. Okay, favorite palette from a favorite brand. I would definitely have to say this. Again, I'm a nudes person. I love nudes. The Going Coconuts from ColourPop is beautiful. And the shades here in the center, they're just so metallic and so reflective and so pretty. I just love them so much. I think it's a really beautiful palette. I feel like it's a great small size palette. I like that it has a mirror. I wish it was cardboard packaging, but I, I do use this a lot and it's my favorite ColourPop palette. I do like the Nine Pan series, but I particularly like Going Coconuts. So my most used palette is not really a palette. When I started thinking about the eyeshadow that I used the most, I started thinking about what have I hit pan on, and it's the Super Shock Shadows from ColourPop, definitely. Like this one here, this one is in Plunge. I don't think that they make this shade anymore, but it's a really pretty metallic shade. This one here is Kush. They don't make this one anymore either, but it's a beautiful metallic cool tone shade, so a warmer one and a cooler one. I have several of these, and, and for a long time, when I really fell in love with the Super Shock Shadows, this is one here. This is a matte, and this one is called Glow. Oh, it's so old. It's a matte, but I used to use this to kind of prime my eye because this formula works really well, and if you put anything else on top of it, it sticks beautifully but it also helped because the color it was to blank out my eye, I didn't show any of the veins, and it was super easy to apply with my finger and it has pan in it. 
This is another one. Oh, I've used this one so much. Can't open it. This one here is called Prickly Pear, and it's a beautiful taupey shade, but it has some some warmth to it. It's really beautiful. So I I think that my Super Shock shadows are the ones that I use the most. I've gone through three of these, Glow, and then they quit making them. There are so many shades that I love from ColourPop and the Super Shock formula. It really is one of my favorites. And the Ease, because I just use my finger and I just, you know, blend it in or tap it on and it works so well and they have a wide variety of finishes. So those are the ones I feel like I use the most. Those are the only eyeshadows that I have that have pan in them. So when I was watching Emily Noel's version of this video, she added two more questions to it, which was best dupe. And I had to think about this. I don't normally go out duping my palettes. I really don't. But if there's one palette that stands up really well against another, Remember when I picked this up at the beginning of the year, I did a whole video kind of scouring my stash to see if I could find other palettes that gave a similar look. So the color story in this, again, let me just show it to you one more time. There's a lot of metallics and mattes in here, and it leans kind of warm and rosy. The one that came the closest and had almost half of identical dupes was the ColourPop Bare Necessities palette. So I feel like You've got 30 shades in here. It doesn't, the other one doesn't have a black. So some of these darker shades might be a little too much, but it does have like the really beautiful bright white-ish shade. It has more of these rosy tones, some of the warmer tones and some beautiful mattes. And I felt like there was enough that if you liked one, but didn't want to spend the 45, $49, you could get this for 30 and it'd be comparable. The last question Emily had was the palette that you've rediscovered through this process. And I would say it's probably this, the Natasha Denona Metropolis palette. It had been in a place where I'd seen it, but I kind of got to the point where I'd seen it so many times, I forgot it was there. And then when I opened it up, I was like, oh, stunning. And so this is one that I definitely want to leave like front and center and try again. And I remember mentioning how the Natasha Denona bronze palette had some similar shades in here. I definitely want to create more of that bronze palette look using these shades um, and reminding myself that I don't have to run out and get the newest, latest, greatest. Even though, I mean, if you have it, great, but I'm trying not to spend as much money on makeup. And I already have a lot and I have beautiful and really expensive makeup as you can see through this video. But this is definitely one that I want to rediscover as I was going through my massive horde of eyeshadows. I was like, oh yeah, that one. Thank you so much for watching today. Let me know if you have any of these palettes, if there are any of your favorites, or if there's like one question out of this palette tag that you really resonated with, let me know your answer to that in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for being subscribed. Have an amazing day and I'll see you again soon.